In today's episode, Courtney and I sit down with Kiki Johnson with Insurance Agent App. We're going to be diving into technology, the customer experience, the future of technology, and how you can utilize technology in the agency, the importance of branding yourself. With that being said, let's start the show. You've been in the insurance game for a while and you still fall short on your life insurance goals every single month. You're knocking PNC out of the park, but when it comes to life insurance, you struggle. Sure, sometimes you can get the apps, but the premium sucks, all right? I struggled with that too. I struggled. It sucked. I could barely pay my bills and that's exactly why we created the Six Figure Life Insurance Producer course so that you don't have to struggle anymore. We teach you exactly how to start the conversation regardless if it's a PNC sales conversation, a pivot to a current customer, you're actively calling current customers and talking about life insurance, you're having appointments either in person or virtually. We cover all of that. Not only how to have the conversation or start the conversation, how to overcome those initial objections. And then the types of questions to ask the customer to get them involved in the life insurance conversation with you. And then how to educate them on the types of policies that they can have within their plan. And lastly, how to ask for the sell and then overcome those objections. Like I need to think about it. I need to talk to my spouse. It's a little bit more than I was hoping for. You have to be comfortable in every aspect of the conversation, regardless if it's in person or over the phone, and that's exactly what we teach in this course. You get access to everything from the playbooks, the word tracks, the scripts, the state-of-the-art video training that you have in this course, and the best part is it's a one-time investment. One-time investment into yourself and into this course, and you own everything we talked about and more forever. So when you bring up a life conversation and maybe you mess up, you can go back. And you can look at the word track. You can go back and look at the script. You can go back and watch the videos. So if you're tired of struggling, if you're tired of not helping more customers out with our life insurance, if you're tired of living paycheck to paycheck like I was, take action. Click the link below. Hey, welcome to the Insurance Buzz. We are your host, Michael and Courtney Weaver. And we have a very special guest with us today, Kiki Johnson. Kiki, welcome. How are you? Hello, hello. I am great and really excited to be here with you guys. Haven't seen you since Scoop, so this is very fun to uh, to reconnect. We're so excited to have you as well. I know it feels like just yesterday we were talking about this exact topic, having you on the podcast, and that was what, three or three months ago already? Yeah. My, how time flies. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about what I view as technology in the insurance space, how agents can utilize technology to enhance the customer experience, but not replace the customer experience. And so I would love to get into honestly where you are seeing right now with agents utilizing technology, maybe some things that they're doing extremely well, and maybe some things you see, ah, this is what I would work on if I was an agency owner. First, I would just say they're doing really well if they're just being open to technology, testing the waters, or diving right in. I think that's what every agent and agency owner and people in the agency have to just wrap their heads around that technology is here and it's your friend. It may be frustrating you right now, but there are ways to improve that. So just keep moving forward. It's never too late. and you can, it's an iterative process. I mean, just keep tweaking. Just, you know, it's, it, as I say, you can't do everything all at once. If you can just pick a couple of things, find a pain point, fix the pain point, move to the next, reiterate, keep just tracking on it. That's really good. The thing I think they're probably doing really bad is they still have, as tons of entrepreneurs in all different industries have, is the shiny object. That is going to solve my problem. I'm going to add that to my pitch. Mm. Oh, great. Whoa, that's that's it. Let me add that. And what they get is just a bunch of disconnected one-offs that really create more work for them. When, when they were actually trying to reduce work, they've actually multiplied the work because now they've got this janky thing that they're trying to cobble together and they don't really necessarily know or have the time to think through. So 
move forward, but you don't have to go at the speed of light. You got to figure out what is it you need to take care of, which is efficiency, workflows, processes. Make sure that you're looking at it from a 360 point of view, meaning have you ever tried to be a customer of your own agency? Have you ever tried to be an employee of your own agency? Have you ever tried to be a carrier walking into your agency? Uh, you know, all the different roles and ask the same question like, wow, this is great. Or, wow, this really sucks. Like, there's no there there. Like, <laughs> this is fascinating to me because the analogy I was given once, because I understand this to my core, technology is moving so fast. And we're always trying to integrate and optimize simultaneously because there's so many different features and you want to make sure one's talking to the other. But somebody said to me one time, as a customer, it's like taking them in an amusement park and you want to put them on a roller coaster and take them all the way through the ride. And you don't know what their experience is until you go through that yourself. So if I'm an agent and I'm listening to this and I'm wanting to go on my customer journey, where do you see like the first hang up that's pretty common where it's like, oh, this process is clunky? I will start as a prospect. If I'm a prospect and I come to your agency, how did I get here? Mm. If I walk in those shoes, what was that experience after the initial touch point? After that touch point took me to the next touch point. Did I drop off? Did I fall through the cracks? Was there too much lag time? So prospecting has got one thing. And websites are usually are where you drive your prospects to. So we think of, you know, a website is your prospecting tool. And once you get them through that and check all that, then they become a customer. Now they're a customer. I have a policy. What do you send me? How do you touch me? Do you? Or are they getting more mail from the carrier and you're wondering why they don't remember your name? Or if they want to get in touch with you, have you, do they have any way to engage with you? Because most people aren't going to go back to your website once they're your customer, because that's not personalized for them. There's nothing that tells them about their insurance. And so it's got to be an interactive and Nobody wants more emails. I'll just say that. I love a, a good CRM. I think CRMs are incredible. But bombarding people with emails, telling them about something that may or may not be important to them in that moment, doesn't enhance the client experience because in that moment, they're not going to go back through their emails trying to say, I know they sent me something about that at some point. I don't know. And they're just not. So then they call up and then the agencies are like, oh, we can't handle the load of phone calls, but people don't have any options. So these are some of the pain points that we, when we were, because we, we were policyholders, I can tell you our origin story and how we got into insurance and our crossroads of insurance and technology. But it was, we've all been policyholders. We all know what that experience is like and there are better ways that we'd all like to see. Well, and I love the fact that you are focused on helping agents with the brand loyalty piece and brand awareness of the agency themselves versus the carrier. I think that's a huge, I think that's a huge pain point that a lot of agency owners don't necessarily focus on because we have so many things going on as far as leading a team, bringing in business. How are people hearing about us? Lead gen, like customer retention strategies, but branding yourself versus the carrier you represent or carriers, that's going to increase customer loyalty because the big brands, brand loyalty is at an all-time low right now. So how are you finding or what are some ways that agents could or can brand themselves as, hey, this is Weaver Insurance. Like how are, how are you seeing agents do that and how are you helping agents do that? The way we do that is our mobile app and online customer service portal are branded for the agency. And what we realized early on is one of your problems, one of the agency's pain points is creating that branding. Like, okay, I got a logo. But what do I do with it? How do I do it? So 
inside the app, it's branded. And it's one of the reasons we named, because when we did our research, when we were looking at coming into the insurance space is how do people perceive their insurance? How do they store their insurance? So do they store it as the Weaver Insurance Agency or do they store it as Michael or Courtney or just insurance? And nine times out of 10, they store it under insurance and then it says Michael or Courtney. And often the agency name is never even logged into a contact because the relationship is with the person most often, or it's just insurance. So they've got the phone number. So that's why we've really focused on and why the app is called insurance agent app, because that's how people think of their insurance. When they go into their device, they search for insurance. So when that comes up, what's going to come up is the insurance agent app. And we've got, you can have your own branded icon. And when you click on it and it opens up, it's all branded with your colors, with your logo, and then it's personalized for the individual client. So it is that true, fully immersive customer experience and expectation for a customer service platform is that when I go in here, like it's my policies. If I'm in an accident, it's about I can pick from my vehicles to write up in that accident. Analogy that we've always used is the airlines. We all go to the airline's website to book a trip because it's most comprehensive there. It's got all the information. But when I'm going on a trip and it's just about me once I've established that, do you ever go to the website to check on the status of your flight or check in or check where your bags are? No, you go to the app and the app is all about you and only your information. And that's why companies always say for a better customer experience, download our app or go online to our app. And that's the same thing that we've done is we've given agencies the ability to create that custom experience because as busy as you guys are on the back end, your customer doesn't see any of that work, busy work. None of it. They don't know that you called 15 carriers. They don't know that you've got three monitors up. They don't know that all that work they do, they just know is it there or is it not? Who do I pay? When is it due? Did it cover me? Didn't it? So you got to keep that going. That's really key. So much as you can have your branding up there up front, they don't really care. Often they don't even know who the carrier is. I mean, the agency branding up front because they want to open that up and they want to click on policies and they want to see an auto policy, a bot policy, a liability policy, an umbrella policy, an auto policy, not carrier names and whose policy is that with, because the focus should be on the agency and their expertise and where they've placed you. And when they drill down on it, all the information is there. It's just the focus is on the agent and the agent's expertise. So talk to me about integration, because again, that makes my like head spin with having all of these different products. What are you seeing as a trend that agents should focus on? Is it more, do they need to learn more tech? Do they need to continue to be open to tech? Do they need to streamline? What does that look like as a trend? Because you have a tech background. So talk to us about tech. I have a tech background, but I, but, but I have to talk about tech and insurance. Yeah. Because tech and tech and insurance are kind of like worlds apart. Yeah. <laughs> and we joke and, and, and talk about how a year in insurance is like the reverse of dog years. It takes, you know, one year insurance is actually three years yes. because it just takes so much longer. I mean, to do anything. And, and I, now that I've been in it long enough, I understand there's insurance has systems that are built 30 years ago on older technology and you can't just take it down and pop it and, and, and fix it. I mean, it may seem obvious, but I'll give an example of the carriers, why they, the information is often so fragmented is the carriers have one server for all the policy data. They have another server for the claims data. They have another server for the billing data didn't talk to each other until recently. So you couldn't just 
get the data. So the policy data and the billing data weren't necessarily matched up. They were two separate events and separate things. So, you know, people always think, oh, they should just fix it. And they're trying. So be patient. Some are doing a better job. Some are, have other issues, but everybody's working towards the same goal of trying to improve it. And, you know, even, even the new tech companies that came in had fabulous tech that's not good enough because you still got to get it to work with the old systems. So if you don't understand that insurance is a beast unto itself, just with data points alone, I mean, you look at fintech and fintech has 5,000 data points. You've got, you know, deposits, withdrawals, you know, but with insurance, you've got like 300,000 data points. With, you know, and, and, and then you get into commercial and buildings and locations and coverage and limits and deductibles and all of these things. So now I'm nerding out, so I will pull myself back in. Nerd. No, <laughs> no, keep going. This keep is going. good. This yeah. is good nerding out. Yeah. I will sit here and nerd out on this all day long because <laughs> yeah. this is, we're talking about a time that everyone knows the insurance industry is very far behind when it comes to technology, but technology over the last five years has rapidly changed this industry. And I think over the next three to five, what we've seen is nothing compared to what we are about to experience and see in my opinion. Are you an insurance agent struggling to meet your sales goals? Do you feel overwhelmed and disorganized, making it hard to keep track of your leads and close deals? If so, our sales training program is the solution you've been looking for. Our program is designed specifically for insurance agents who need help improving their sales skills and increasing their productivity. We understand that the insurance industry, it can be highly competitive, fast paced, which is why we've created a program that will help you stay ahead of the curve and close more deals. We understand that your time is valuable, which is why we've created a program that is flexible and convenient. You can access the sales training lessons and coaching sessions from anywhere at any time so you can fit your training around your busy schedule. Don't let the lack of sales training hold you back from achieving your full potential as an insurance agent. Sign up for our sales training program today and start closing more deals, generating more revenue, and achieving your sales goals with more confidence. There's so much more to the program. So if you're interested in joining the program that's helped over 10,000 insurance agents nationwide, visit our website, www.weaversa.com or send me a text directly at 816-727-7610 with any questions to find out more. It's a horrible thing to say, but COVID actually catapulted insurance forward in a way that nothing else could have done that. I mean, had it not been for COVID, we would still be just moseying along because you could. I mean, there was no real urgency. We'll get to it when we get to it or we'll get to it when we can get it the way we want to do it. So for all of those reasons, insurance is moving forward. Everybody's moving in a different pace. We are, you know, we came in, when we came into the insurance space, we got initially connected with an agency management system. It happened to be QQ before QQ was purchased by Vertifor. And Mark Malice, who was the owner at the time, was just a very forward thinker. So he had open APIs, which are the connectors. He was in the cloud already. So you didn't have servers in your closet, in your office kind of thing. And that was our introduction. So that was our baseline, or at least that's what we thought was our baseline. And we found out, oh my gosh, he was so far ahead of what anybody else, everybody had APIs, but they were not APIs that anybody else could integrate into because you have to have a lot of security around it. You can't just, you know, the authorization to make sure that the data isn't going to get out because there's a lot of personal information in there. There's a lot of stuff that can't just you got to know where it's going, how it's going, what's what the security is, how it's being encrypted, where it's being stored, blah, 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 blah. So that's part of what's taken a lot longer. So, you know, we often joke that we started 10 years ago, but we probably could have started five years ago and taken the time off because <laughs> the industry just wasn't yep. ready to do what we were ready to do. I mean, we've still got stuff that's 
we're waiting for other people. We won an award, a big award five years ago about first notices of loss being sent in tandem to the agency and to the carrier. So it was three-way communication and presented at a big accord event and won the actual, the innovation award. The carriers still aren't there yet to accept it. So it's doable. There's some amazing things that we're that we have waiting in the wings, but it's it's kind of like 5G. You know, everybody's like, I mean, all the carriers are promoting 5G. We've got 5G, 5G. How often are you actually on 5G on your phone if you're not right next to your home or a big city? 5G is not here yet, you know? So it's kind of the same thing. There's the, the technology, we're getting there. And with each step, more and more fun things are available. More and more automations are available. More and more consolidation, integrations, sending things back and forth. I mean, don't get discouraged, agents. It's coming. Hang in there because your life will get easier. But that strategic blending of technology is critical. Don't, you know, take the time. Your good vendors will talk to you about, okay, what else are you using? All right. This is how we manage that. This is how we help with those workflows and all of that. So. I love that answer. I geeked out on all of the data too. How are you seeing particularly insurance technology and the relationship with customer service? Where do you see the future headed when it comes to customer service? Are we still bringing people in for that position? Is that something that is going to go more tech-based? What does that look like? Customer service is always going to have to be kind of omni-channel approach. Insurance covers people from 18 all the way to 110. So you're going to have people that never, ever want to talk to you that you need to service and provide the capabilities for them to be serviced. That's where technology is going to be critical because they can self-serve. They can do it faster than you can. They're not trying to cut you out. They're actually loving on you more if you're just letting them get it done. So that for, for a big portion or cohort of your of your customer base or the growing customer base is just let me do it. I, I'll love you more if you let me do it. And then you're going to have, you know, you got to be realistic. You can be an agency that says, I don't want that business. If you need to call me and I need to handhold you, I don't want that business. But there's another agency out there that's like, hey, I'll take that business all day long. You just have to decide. It's, I think, self-service is going to be just out there. We all, we love it. There's times we, I do not need to talk to you to, you know, I shouldn't have to call you to get my auto ID card. I should be able to have it right on my phone. And the frustrating thing as a policyholder is if I'm a policyholder and you're my agent, why can't I, why can't I get that? Why do I have to go through hoops or go and log in someplace else and get a carrier to send it to me? You're my agent. Isn't that what I, why I work with you? So agencies have to be aware is if you keep pushing people to the carriers, you're not helping to strengthen your own relationship. Because at some point, someone's going to be like, why am I working with them? At least on certain policies. And there are carriers out there that are welcoming. You're like, hey, we can help you out. You know, the agent's there. If you want to go with the agent, great. But if you'd like to work with us, sure, we can help you with that. So everybody's trying to balance it. But I, I've got to go back and tell you our origin story. So we were in technology. We were in mobile development back in 2008. And when only, and we were working on mobile apps when there were only 15,000 mobile apps in the app store. So we were very early in on it. And when we were in on it, when people saw these funny little devices as little gaming machines, and maybe you could make a phone call on it. And we were already at the point that, and I was so excited. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have everything everywhere, any way I want it. I mean, I was so, cause I'm a paper, per, I like get lost in paper. I'm like, I hate all these little pieces of, you know? And I was like, I can have my calendar here. I can have my appointments here. I everything. I can have documents here. I mean, I was just so excited. So we were already seeing that. Of, and then my co-founder was running and 
while he was running, a, it was slippery out and wet and a car started to slide sideways. And had it jumped the curve three feet sooner, it would have taken him out and I probably wouldn't be in this business. But it slid in front of him, crashed into a tree and told the car. And so he was there, helped clean it up. And the driver was just like, oh my God, what do I do? Who do I call? And you just, that, that nervousness that we all have, if you're in an accident, you don't remember anything. I mean, I have had agents call me and be like, I get it now. Cause we have a full accident claims kit component in the app, but called them as like, okay, I get it because I'm an agent and I've been an agent for 15 plus years. And I couldn't even remember my own name. I couldn't remember who my agency, what, who my insurance was with. And they were, they were mortified at themselves, but it fun, suddenly like walking in the, in the policyholder's shoes, they got it and saw why this is critical. You don't ever want somebody to use it, but the reality is it happens. I mean, that's why you have insurance. So anyhow, so that got us on the trail of this person didn't know. And since we were mobile, he was like, I am going to, the future is, I'm going to look at my phone. I'm going to go into my phone to look up insurance and I'm going to figure out what I'm supposed to do. And it's going to tell me exactly what to do, what to record, what to take pictures of, who to call, all of that. And so basically that's what we built or what we started to research. We went to, started going to agencies and talking to them. And this is when we realized the challenges of the independent channel because nine out of 10 said, I would love that, but I don't have the time, money, or resources to produce that. And if you could do that, what would be really great, because we were talking about the claims app, they were like, could you put an inventory in there? Could you have them the ability to fill out a form, to submit a request, and all of these things that are part of the app now. But the, the two foundations of the app was the accident claims portion, because that is the number one moment, mobile moment of need when somebody's grading their agent. You know, were you there for me? The one time I really needed you, could you, could you do it? The other one was that in that two years we were doing our research, three families at my kid's school had fires, devastating fires, where basically burned house to the ground, smoked to the point they had to redo the entire house. And the other was basically enough damage that they had to tear it down. And the experiences were all different. They were, they were both, you know, friends of mine. So I was talking to them and one had had an inventory and had done it. And the two other had not. And they were sitting there saying, how I don't know what I had. I just thought because I had coverage up to that they would just write me a check and I could just replace everything. And it's like, no, you need to document. You know, a lot of times they'll do a complete loss, but especially for the one that had the smoke inhalation, she had to, it wasn't a total loss. So she had to document everything. How many plates did you have? Did you have this? Did you have that? How many dining room chairs? You know, just the labor intensity. So that was another thing that we've always had is the inventory because natural disasters, mm -hmm. you yep. need it. So, and again, that strengthens the position of the agent. This is so good. All right. I've got so much stuff to say right now. I mean, from about the points that you are making, like the number one reason Insurance claims. What's the experience during the during the insurance claim? And I love that you bring this up because I was just talking to an agent. He was talking to a an agent that is a, a rock star, let's just say. And the guy's like, we don't even focus on claims. Like somebody has a claim, they can talk to the carrier. We don't care. It doesn't help us grow our business. And I'm like, holy shit, bro. Like that is a good way to go out of business. <laughs> like if you're not taking care of people when they need you the most, that is a good way to lose business. So I love that your number one, you you catered technology in an app to make it easier for customers that also makes the agent look good at the same time. And I, and I am of a belief that there still has to be that human connection and that human element piece during times like that. So I love that. I almost cracked a joke earlier about carriers. You said carriers would might get away from like from the agent, but it's like, actually the carriers may just 
decide they no longer need the agents if the agents aren't going to do the servicing and the carriers can just do the servicing. So I love that point as well that you made. Oh yeah. They'll take that <clears> business <throat> if you don't want it for sure. Yeah. That's a lot of money. <laughs> Getting yeah. rid of those servicing commissions. Yeah. That, that's an automatic uh, profit. Yeah. That's an F revenue increase. So I love this. You're solving so many needs for agents and most importantly, you're prioritizing the customer and agent relationship. When I look at competitive advantages in the future. It's the human connection. It's the human element while utilizing technology to make the customer experience 10 times better than what it is today. Yeah. So how can you blend both? And that's exactly what you're talking about right now. And I, I'm, I dig it. I love it. Kiki, if somebody wanted to follow what you're doing, connect with you, even if they're interested in utilizing this mobile app, what's the easiest way to do that? Go uh, our website. We've got videos. We've got all the information, and it's insuranceagentapp.com. And they can, if they want to reach out to me directly, they can reach me at kiki at insuranceagentapp.com. Perfect. I love it. Kiki, thank you for this. This has been amazing. Dropping, dropping knowledge bombs all episode long. I love it because there's almost this pushback of technology because it, it can be overwhelming. And you simplified it in the space of this is all about service. How do we enhance the experience for the customer? And how do we make you, the agent, look really damn good in the process? And that's what we all want. We're like, how do I look the best doing the least? That is my <laughs> life <laughs> motto. That is my life <laughs> motto. Kiki, thank you so much. The one thing I would also caution agents is don't get rid of your service. Like agents have tech fatigue and they're like, okay, well, I don't think this one gets used. So I'm going to, and they get rid of the most important tech sometimes just because they don't understand and they haven't looked at how critical it is because their customer, without a customer, without a happy customer, they don't have a business and they don't have growth and they don't have referrals and all of those things. And that's where you just, you have to, streamline everything and you have to have an agency management system you have to have a customer service platform you have to have a if you can a crm which is a prospecting tool where your leads you can fill pipelines and all of that and you got to have a voip and now you can add data analytics and you can add all of these other things but you have to manage how you put it together because you still got to handle all those carrier websites and with the market the way it is, they are not making it easy for you guys to be efficient with your time. So anything that you know you can do for you or your customer, that's what you want to focus on. That's right. New business commissions are cool. Recurring commissions are better. Are they sexy? <laughs> no agency owner getting in this for new business commissions. We getting into this for recurring revenue, baby. Let's do this. And the only way you have recurring revenue is by having yeah. happy customers. All right. So Kiki, thank you so much for your time today. For all of those of you that are listening, thank you so much. You might be watching us on YouTube. Love you. Thank you so much for your support. As always, time is the most valuable and important asset that we all have. We appreciate you spending time with us today. Go out, make it great.